from East Flat Rock, North Carolina, we welcome you to Faith in God Missions with the Reverend Steve and Frida Bishop. This program has been paid for by Faith in God Missions, a ministry working to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and preach the gospel in the United States and the foreign fields. Join us now as we worship the Lord together in word and song. Fred and I are sitting here today in the studio, and we're broadcasting today from our new video system. Well, now, everybody don't understand what you're talking about. True. So but let's go back. Back back in April, we were recording in the studio, and our system went down. Everything. I mean, everything went down. Cameras, everything. The cameras, the, the switcher, everything went down. And all at one time, they just started putting cam- one camera on top of the other. We could yep. not separate them. So I took the system apart and sent it in to have it fixed, and... I knew what they were going to say, but I was hoping it would be different. (laughs) But they they called me back and said, Steve, that the system is so old and so out of date that we can't do anything for it. Can't find the parts. We can't find the parts for them. So we put out a plea back in April that we needed some new equipment. And thank you, because many of you came through and helped us purchase the equipment we're using today. You know, it, it went out in April, and this is July. And But the Lord supplied the need. We had to order the equipment to get it in. Yes. Then we had to figure out how to set it up. Yes. And I'm not a, I'm not a computer expert, <laughs> so it took me a little bit longer than it would take some people that knows about computers. But, you know, the Lord was good to us. Yes. And, and we, hope you, we hope the picture quality looks yes. better and the audio looks, sounds better than yes. it did before. But yes. I just want to thank each one that had a part in it, yes. helping us get this system and, up. And the prayers that they prayed. Yes. Uh, because we, I think we put on there to pray for you to right. learn how to set it back up. Uh, because, like he says, and I left him alone in the studio and let him do his own thing. Um, he was on the phone. He was on video trying to figure out on the Internet, trying to figure out getting videos and trying to figure out how to hook this up, how to hook that up. 
getting on the phone, talking to people. And I'm sure uh, they probably got tired of listening to They me. probably did. Said, oh, no, there's that troublemaker again. Want more questions answered. But we finally got it set up. Steve finally got it set up. Stacy helped him, uh, was able to help him a few days here in the studio, and we appreciate that. And appreciate all your prayers and all the churches and the individuals who sent in. Yes. Thank you for helping us with this need. Uh, because just like you have sometimes your car battery goes out or something goes out wrong with your car, you unexpected. This was completely unexpected. Yes, it was. And, but you came through for us. It took us time to get everything in uh, and find what we needed. Steve was searching that, trying to find out exactly what I, we I needed. I was trying to find the best prices, too. And he was trying to find the best price, so because this can cost way up there. Way up in the thousands. And we, we got it at a good price, uh, had people helping us uh, find the right thing that we needed. And so we appreciate those that helped us yes. uh, do that and answering your questions right. on the phone. So thank you, everybody who did help and who prayed for us. And we got it back up and running. Right. And so. I would like to ask the people to do us a favor. What's that? Would you write to us and let us know if the quality is any better? And if, if we look if, any younger. If we look any younger, <laughs> you can tell us that too. But if the video quality is any better, if the audio quality is any better, would you write and let us know? Because I may need to work on something else. Well, our monitors you, here look really good. If you don't have the cameras adjusted right, maybe we have our black hair back. <laughs> maybe. But according to my monitor, mine's still gray. Yeah, not true. <laughs> but the monitors look better in the studio. Yes. So just write to us let us know if it's any better. It's what you're watching, if it's any better than what we're looking at right yeah, now. We hope it is. And new cameras, uh, new board uh, to record on. So it's called a TriCaster. Tri uh, so that's the board we have to have and hook everything back up to it. So just let us know. And again, thank each one, each church and each individual that had a part in helping us get this new equipment in. And if you don't have the address, it's Faith in God Missions, Post Office Box G. East Flat Rock, North Carolina, 28726. It's very important if they write to us. That's right. Or they can go on our, on our email. Website, right. or go, go on to our, our website. website and go on our email and email us. You know that email address? Faithingodmissions at gmail.com. Okay. Or go on our website at faithingodnc, and you can find us there. on Faith and, and it it'd take you to our email address yes, as well. Take care you can care. write to us that way. Yeah. We'll but again, you thank that. you each one. That had a part in this. You know, those that were obedient and listened to the Lord, what they could do to help us get this yes. started. We thank you, each one. Yes, thank you so much. God yes. bless you. Amen.
talk to you just a little bit and I said I'm gonna try to be brief as I can but I'm just a little bit We're looking at John chapter 13 two scriptures here I'm gonna do a lot of scriptures and I'm not gonna ask you to turn all of them because a lot of scriptures but in John 13 34 and 35 it says a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you that ye also love one another by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another so what's Jesus telling us to do? Love one another. That's one of his commandments. We've got to love one another. We can't say we love our brother and turn around and talk about him. If you turn around talking about your brother and running him down, you don't love your brother. That's right. But if we love the Lord, if we love our brother, like we love the, should be loving the Lord, we're not going to talk about our brother. But we're going to be showing God's love, doing what we can for him. 1 John 4, 19 says, We love him because he first loved us. Again, one of them songs you sing, we love him. I love, oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. He made it possible that I could love him. 1 John 4 and 8, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. We look around our world so much today and we see all the hate. You know why we hate? Because we don't know God. This world does not know God, but if we have a chance, we can know God. But our light has got to shine to show the world, Jesus Christ through us, that we can love, because God is love. In John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that's how much he loved it. For God so loved the world that he gave, he freely gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross that we could have eternal life with him. Now, way back in Genesis, the very first book of Genesis, when God said, let us make man in our own image, he was, who do you think he was talking to? He was talking to his son. He was talking to the Holy Ghost. Let us make man in our own image. You know, way back in Genesis, when God made man, he knew man was going to sin. It didn't take him by surprise. He knew it. God knows everything. He created this universe. The God that created the earth. He created the stars. He created the moon. He created the sun. He created all the plant life. He created all the animals. He created man and woman. God knew when he created them that they were going to sin. He knew then, and Jesus Christ knew then, that he was going to have to come and give his life. He's going to have to show that love, so much love, that he was willing to give his life for each one of us, that we can have eternal life with him. He wants us to live for him. He wants to keep going for him and live for him and do what he wants us to do. In Romans 5, 6, and 8 says, When we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Per adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God, catch that, but God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He came freely and he died freely for us. He could have came off the cross any time he wanted to come off the cross. But he knew if he came off the cross, we wouldn't have hope. Right. But if he gave his life freely, that we could have eternal life then, so he was freely gave his life. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. In John 15, chapter, starting in verse number 9, chapter 15, And the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, 
that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another. One of God's commandments, love one another. Just like God loves us, love one another. As I have loved you, he didn't stop there. He says, as I have loved you, you love the others just like I've loved you. Greater love is no man than this, that a, father, that a man lay down his life for his son, for friends. Drop down to verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. That's good fruit. That's much fruit. So this lesson this morning, bringing forth fruit. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give it you. These things I command you, that you love one another. Over and over and over, we see God says, love one another. He wants to show his love to others. John 14 and 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. You say, Steve, what's the commandment? I just give you some already. Love one another. But the, another commandment, the greatest commandment, Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You say, Steve, I'm not a preacher. I can't go into all the world. But you know what? When the Lord saved you, he did not save you to just sit down on the bench. He didn't save you to hide it. He saved you to tell somebody. Yes. You may not be able to go into all the world, but you can tell your friends at work. You can tell your coworkers. You can tell the people you go to school with. You can tell people in the grocery store. When you're shopping, you can tell them to buy gro- when you t- I don't know how many times I've been in the grocery store, and somewhere down the line, somebody come up and want to start talking. Yeah. When they want to start talking, if you really listen to the Lord, it won't take long until his name comes up. Because right. if he's inside, he's going to come out. If he's really inside, he's going to come out. That's what he wants to do. He wants to share his, share his word with others that they can know about him. The Bible tells us, he says, I think it's in Romans. Yeah, Romans 10, verse 14. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Right. Now, that don't mean a preacher like Brother Rick or myself or any other preacher getting up. He's talking about you too. If you're a born-again Christian, he's talking about you. Because you preach that word preacher here, it carries the meaning of to herald his name. It carries the meaning to proclaim, to, to let everybody know that you come in contact. Jesus Christ is Lord. If you don't do that, but tell him what he's did for you. What he done for you when he hung on the cross, how he died for you, and how he promised you eternal life with him. That's a lot, a lot of times your testimony to someone may be exactly what they need to hear, except the Lord's up heart. You know, it reminds me over in, in John chapter 21. Jesus had already come and died. He, he had already rose from the dead, from the grave. He had already showed himself to the disciples two times. And in ch- chapter 21 of John, it talks about what well, he showed himself to the disciples the third time. You know, some of those disciples, I, I believe the reason he showed them to the third time, I believe they got discouraged. You know, they, they knew the words of Jesus. They had traveled with him for three years. You know, they knew what Jesus taught. Jesus began his ministry, by the way. If you look in Matthew, Jesus began his ministry preaching repentance. You know, that's never changed. His word should still be preaching repentance. John, John even preached the repentance, but he died through baptism. But Jesus preached repentance, coming to shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's, that's the only way. We've got to believe in his name. But I believe when he, when he had come to him that third time, he was there on the shore of Galilee. He was there on the bank. Those disciples had, got, had gotten discouraged, I believe. And they, well, Peter, he's the one everybody knows about. You mentioned the disciples' name. Most people know Peter. Because Peter was one of those, so much like us, that we open our mouth and we should keep our mouth shut. We open our mouth and stick our foot in our mouth. We, we say things without thinking about things first. Now, Peter was one of those fellows, saying things that he shouldn't say. And, and Peter says, I'm going fishing. That's all he ever knew before he met Christ. All he knew was fishing. He was a fisherman from his, from his birth on. He, he, he grew up as a fisherman. And these other disciples and all that with him says, Just hold on, Peter, we're going to go with you. You know, but the Bible says they fished all night. They didn't catch anything. But in, when morning came, Jesus was on the shore. And he, he, he hollers out at them. He says, children, you got any, any bread? You know, he's saying, you got any fish? Have you caught anything? You know, they hollered back, no. They didn't know who Jesus was because Jesus had been gone for a little while from them. They didn't know who he was. But he hollered out, you got any meat? They said, no, we don't have any. He said, cast that net on the other side of the boat. He said, that, that's where the fish are at. So they were obedient. They cast it on the other side. And when they cast and they started drawing in, there so many fish they couldn't get the nets in. That's when John, he says, that's the Lord. That's the Lord. Now that perked Peter's ears up. That's the Lord. You know, they, they come, the boat came on into shore and they dragging that net with them. But when they got to shore, Jesus was already there. He had a coal of fire going. He had fish on that fire. He had bread on that fire. He said, come and dine. He wants us to come and dine today. That's right. He invites us to come and dine. Every time we come into his presence, come and dine. I've got more than enough. 
You know, I, the Lord has got so much in store for us, each one of us, not just me, but each one of us, so much that we cannot comprehend it. Right. If we would just reach out and grasp, if we could just grasp a little bit, just a little bit of what His Word says and take it to heart and believe what His Word says, right. there's so many blessings that we're missing out on. But after they came and dined, they ate all the well. The Lord takes Peter off to the side. He says, Peter, do you love me? That's right. Goes back to what I said, Lord, what we up, Steve, do you love me? Yeah, Peter, do you love me? Well, Peter says, yeah, Lord, you know I love you. He says, feed my sheep. Yep. He goes on to ask Peter two more times, Peter, do you love me? Yeah. You know, Peter, he's saying, Lord, I know. I told you one time that I'd never, I'd never leave you, that I'd die with you. I was willing to die, and I, I denied you. I ran away for four years crucified. I ran away. Your word tells me in Luke, the Lord's told Peter, he says, Peter, Simon, he's a devil desires to have you. Right. He wants to shift you as we. He wants each one of us, he, every one of us. Yes, he he wants to shift us, especially if you've been raised in church. He wants to shift you as we and get you as far away That's from right. God as you can. He wants to be that seed that fell upon a stone of ground that gets choked out. With his cares of this life, with the cares of this world, everyday things, he wants us to get choked down and get bogged down and not realize what he's done for us. But I believe Peter was thinking this, you know, Lord, you know. That's why he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Mm -hmm. He says, Peter, feed my sheep. You know, I got it thinking. Why didn't he say feed my, my lambs the first time? And he said, feed my sheep the second time and the third time. And I got it thinking about that. So I looked up the word lamb. The word lamb is a baby. Yeah. It's a baby sheep. A newborn, and I got to thinking, a newborn in Christ. Yeah. The Lord's telling Peter, you feed my sheep. You take care of those newborn yeah, right. sheep, those newborn lambs in Christ. you got to nurture, nurture them, just like you do a newborn baby here on earth. Right. you got to feed it. you got to take care of it. Yeah. you got to train them the way they got to go. Word. That's what Jesus was telling Peter, and he's telling us the same thing. Feed my lambs. You take care of those newborns, the ones that just come to know me. You take care of them, and you nurture them. Give them the milk until they start growing. Yeah. And then you take care of the sheep. Those full grown, you take care of the sheep, the ones that's in the church and the ones that's growing up. You never know when you witness someone, especially a little child, when they grow up, what that child's going to be. That child could be, he could be another Billy Graham. That's right. You know, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know half of what the Lord's done. But the Lord knows everything. Right. You know, we witness to a little child, one of these little, little boys back here. He could grow up, they're one of the greatest men of God they are. But we've got to train them. Feed my lambs, train that lamb. That's right. Train that newborn the way he should go. When he gets grown, he's not going to depart, but he's going to always remember. Brother Rick mentioned that this morning. He, he learned a lot when he was small, but when he got bigger, he wanted to drift away. He learned a lot in the world, but he learned a lot when he was at church when he was little, but he learned a whole lot in the world. Sad to say, we learn more in the world sometimes than we do in church. And that's our fault. That's, right. that's, that's our teacher's fault. That's our preacher's fault. It's our deacon's fault. It's mom and dad's fault. It's our fault that our kids are not learning what they need to learn. Yes, it is. If we'd kept God in our schools and we'd keep God first, pray and ask God, Lord, help me to be that dad. Help me to be that mom. Help me to be that spiritual leader, that pastor, that teacher that my, the children need. We wouldn't have all this crime we got in the school today. Right. You can't turn the TV on anymore without seeing where some child has shot another child mm -hmm. or some child has shot another a teacher or whatever. And I mean child, even teenagers, I'm calling them a child because they're, they're still, they still don't know right from wrong, apparently. But this cause, we do not love God. Because if, if we had God, if we had God's love, God th that we put God out, that's right. If we had God's love, then we would know better. We've got to go back to our bases. We've got to go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created man in his own image. In the beginning, we've got to go back to in the beginning. Seeking God's love, seeking his face, realizing what Jesus Christ did when he hung on the cross. Amen. Realizing how much he loves us, and he still loves us. He's, if he didn't love us, he would not woke you up this morning. But he loves you that much that he woke you up, giving you another chance to put something on a clean slate to work for him. He gave you another chance to live for him or to reject him, but it's up to us. So I want to ask you that one question again. Do you love him? Do you really love Jesus Christ so much that you're willing to deny self? You're willing to accept what Jesus says, and you're willing to fall more in love in Him. Seek and read His Word. If you don't read His Word, you're not going to fall in love with Him. But if you read His Word, you'll know more of His commandments, and you can start obeying His commandments. That's what the Lord gave me for this for today. I said I was trying to be brief, and, and I believe, I, I, I think personally, I believe most people here today love the Lord. I really do. I believe that. 
But the person, perhaps there's someone listening by means of radio or on TV that does not know the Lord. You know, that, this is for you too. It's for every one of us. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's where it goes back to us being a witness, letting our light shine. People look at us, you look over in Matthew, it's talking about having a candle, hiding under a bush. We don't do that. We put it up on a candlestick so everybody can see it. The Lord tells us to let our light so shine before the world. To let our light shine that others can see Him through us. That's what we've got to do. Let others see Him through us. If there's someone listening today or watching today, if you do not know the Lord, if you may be in this church today, if you do not the Lord, today would be a good day to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Let's just pray real quick. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, if there's one today that does not know you, Father, that's listening to the sound of my voice, dear God, that you would tug at that heart. Lord, that you would deal with them, Lord, and let them accept you, Lord, realizing they are a sinner and they need a Savior and they cannot save themselves, Father. Help us, Lord God, to call upon you to ask for forgiveness, Lord, and let you be there. Become their Lord and their Savior and their King, Father. Help us, Lord, let our light shine for you that others can see your good works through us, Father. In Jesus' lovely name we pray. We thank you and we love you. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm free. I'm glad I'm covered by the blood of Calvary. I'm glad he washed me from the miry clay. I'm glad he washed my sins away. For joining us today. This program has been paid for by Faith in God Missions of East Flat Rock, North Carolina, a ministry that's working in the United States and the foreign fields. Please send all correspondence to Faith in God Missions, Post Office Box G, East Flat Rock, North Carolina, 28726. Or visit us on the website at faithingodnc.com. You can also find us on Facebook at Faith in God Missions. Until next time, remember, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son.